Hello everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 where I'll be giving you my best bets for tomorrow's racing but before we get stuck into that and also as well before I um, go into my quick recap on how our selections ran today I just want to say that I'm going to be launching a brand new platform where I'm going to be branching out to the Telegram app it's kind of a bit like WhatsApp and we're going to basically have a massive WhatsApp group where uh, we're going to have lots of different tipsters from all different kind of sports we'll have some football um, people on there we'll have um, some other racing people some golf people you know it's going to be a real community uh, for lots of different tipsters sharing their best bets of the day and their best bets of the week something i really want you to get involved in and all you got to do is just down download the app no strings attached um just download the app it'll be in the description box below and then you just need to request to join and then we'll all add you in and it's basically going to be like what we've got going on in the comments box below you know giving our own thoughts and opinions on things and plus there'll be other good tipsters for you to listen to so i recommend you join it and it's called the tip in line so there's going to be lots of different people involved and we can have up to hundreds of thousands of people involved in it it's a really good upcoming new app and i definitely recommend you to download it so if you want to be part of that click the link in the description box below and then you'll be part of the tipping line community but enough of that let's get into what you want to hear about our tips and how they ran today and what they are going to be tomorrow now our selections today it's kind of been a bit of a disappointing day. It all started on a positive note, though, as our fifth consecutive laid bet came in. That was Legata for Johnny Murta and Shane B. Kelly. Laid it for 4.1 on the Betfair Exchange. And that's, like I said, our fifth consecutive win now. And I think we, we've had eight, uh, eight wins and two losses. So we're operating at an 80% strike rate in the laying department. And this horse just um, just got out battled by the Dermot Weld horse. Uh, at one point, I thought Legata was going to go and win, but uh, Dermot Weld's uh, horse took an age to get past. But luckily, it went our way, and Legata finished in second, and um, we got the good result that we wanted there. Uh, then after that, our long shot is Ishfara, well outclassed. The Michael Dodd filly was very impressive, and it wasn't the one um, a lot of people thought of. I think it was the second favourite. The name the name escapes me now. But uh, yeah, Shvara probably just found it a bit too difficult. Arnap, to be fair to him, he couldn't have done any more. He ran a blinder. The old boy, Club Wexford, you know, he did drift out as well to a very, very interesting price of 6-1. to one. We put him up at 4-1 to one last night. He just managed to cling on to second place. Maybe he needs to come down a pound or two in the weights. But still, definitely one to follow uh, uh, if he does turn up there in the future. That's his only, um, that's his second only defeat, I should say, at the course. So he's won there, I think, before on four of his five starts before today. So definitely is an air course specialist. Loves it there for Roger Fell. But he ran a blinder. Iconic Knight ran no kind of race at Windsor. Very hard to excuse. But however, our next best at the current time of recording, it's just after seven o'clock. So um, our next best is still to go in the eight o'clock at Windsor. Grand Bazaar was put up at five to two last night for Johnny G and um, has been backed into five to four favouritism. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get out of jail there for the day and just come out with a small loss. But uh, yeah, it's been a little bit of a frustrating day today, but hopefully we can bounce back tomorrow and get some winners back on the board. And it's all going to start for us in the 4.45 at Beverly. Now, I'm going to be going here with a horse called Quote Line Direct, which is currently 11 to 2, best odds with bookmakers at the moment. I'm just going to recommend the win only bets here. And this is going to be um, this is going to be my next best for Mickey Hammond and Graham Lee. Now, this horse is down to a very um, low mark now of 57, and it's suggesting that it's going to win a race anytime soon. And I thought this horse was really unlucky at Beverly not to fight out uh, in the victory or at least give the winner um, the chance who it's going to be reappearing against tomorrow. I can't remember the name of the horse now. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be going against that winner again. And this horse, uh, quote line direct, uh, just got into um, just got into a bit of a pocket and was squeezed for room when staying on really strongly. I would recommend anyone who hasn't seen the race and replay to go back and watch it because I definitely think quote line direct was going to get involved. Now, like I said, this horse is back down in the weights now off a reasonable mark of fifty seven. It's one off off a higher mark in the past and Mickey Hammond Yard they're going in okay form at the moment they're operating at 25% strike rate okay they've only had one winner from four runners but they're going okay you know and they could have a winner here and even though you've got the Karen McClintock horse in here Zabil Star 
Um, so Bill Starr, he needs he needs a lot further, and this will come on the short side, I think, for him. So quite line direct, you know. I think um, his time is coming to go in again, and at eleven to two, if he can show his promise last time out, he should have enough. And I think he's definitely underrated in the market, and that's why he's going to be my next best. We then go to Chepstow for the 540 with a horse called Somewhere Secret. Currently 15 to two with bookmakers at the moment. And this horse is trained by Michael Molyneux. And Richard Kingscote is booked for the ride, who is a very interesting jockey book, and he's riding great guns at the moment. Now this Somewhere Secret uh, ran a bit of a strange race last time out and uh, wasn't given much of a hard ride, but stayed on quite strongly uh, to, st uh, to finish in fifth place. And that was over five furlongs. And it's going up tomorrow um, up in trip to six furlongs. And I think that'll suit it. It's one over the course and distance before, so that shouldn't be an issue. And he's back down to his last minute, last winning mark of 64. And in this company of a mark of 64, he's definitely capable of running a very good race out of this. There's four places on offer at the moment with some bookmakers. And I think at 15 to 2, this looks an absolute steal. And the interesting thing is tomorrow, they're going to be putting some blinkers on him, which could really help him. He, he Like I said, he's been a bit of a quirky customer. He's worn quite a few types of headgear. But he's back down to his last winning mark now. And I like it normally when they put the blinkers on first time. It can normally have a very positive effect. It can make the horse concentrate. And I think this horse, like I said, back over course and distance tomorrow, where it's one before, over six furlongs. It looks very well treated. And I think it's definitely, definitely going to go very close. So that's going to be uh, loaded extra tomorrow that's just going to go in our extra column we then go my lay where hopefully we can make it six consecutive lay bets in a row and we're going to take on combine in the 625 at kempton you can currently lay this horse at 3.0 on the betfair exchange for hugo palmer and ryan moore now hugo palmer stable have been going okay and ryan moore you'll know he's my favorite jockey at the moment you know top rider you know but uh, no, no, he's not. I, I can't stand stand uh, stand him at the moment. You know, um, I just think uh, he's really hot and cold, and he, he's he's getting too overhyped by some people in the rating media. I think there needs to be a bit more criticism of him because I think he's been calling it a lot more wrong than right recently, and you've only got to see that on like the likes of Anthony Van Dyke, so Dragonet last week. You know, horses that um that are hanging out the back, and then he's looking for for pathways where maybe they shouldn't be given those style of rides he needs to uh, i think he needs to adapt or maybe he need they they need to to remove him from Bally Doyle. you know i think Jamie Heffernan Wayne Lord and you know and even some of the lads that were filling in for uh, Bally Doyle over here Tom Marquand you know why not give him a chance you know he's just been thrown off um English king in in the in the derby for um for for that race, uh, Frankie Vittori has been booked for the ride, but why not give Tom Marquand a go for the Bally Doyle job a bit more? You know, he, he could be very capable uh, in a job like that. But anyway, back to this combine. This combine uh, finished third behind Frankly Darlin on heavy ground as a two-year-old at Yarmouth. But even though Frankie Darlin didn't win that race, the win the horse that did win it was Caballetta for Roger Verin. And Caballetta ran an OK race at Newbury. She didn't run a, run a brilliant race, but she ran OK. But it's hard to say whether Combine, even though she's got probably the most standout bit of form in the race, is going to kick forward from that. And I thought 3.0, that was quite a bit short on the exchange. On the exchange. And you're going to have some nice types in here in this uh, maiden novice race. You're going to have the likes of Saeed Bin Sarur, Michael Stout, Roger Varian, James Fanshawe, you know, some big power yards that could easily take a step forward with some of these horses that have ran okay so far. And I just think this horse is a bit too short for my liking and I would be very worried about some of the other runners in the race and I don't think actually that race at Yarmouth is that particularly strong even though some people will argue it is because frankly Darlin did go on to win at Newcastle and then the Ribblesdale but uh, don't always look in behind sometimes what, what actually the um don't always get carried away by these horses that go on and win and look at the horses in behind and think that they were really good a lot of the horses sometimes they can disappoint even though the horse might just keep win the one might just keep winning and winning and winning the horses in behind sometimes don't do much for the form but then sometimes they do but i just got the general impression that that race at yarmouth it isn't worth that much in the context of this race and for me i want to be laying out 3.0 and hopefully that can get our sixth consecutive lay bet uh up and running we then go um in the 825 with my long shot now this is a crazy price here that I'm going with. Some of you might think I'm absolutely bonkers 
but I thought a uh, level of um, intensity at 50 to 1 with four places tomorrow could be a bit of a fun long shot bet. Now, this horse is trained by Nigel Hawke and Franny Norton is booked for the ride. Now, I like Nigel Hawke when he sends his runners over the flat. He's done me a few good turns. The Muse is the horse that was frustrating and actually did win last last week and has won two on the bounce now, I believe, at Newcastle and at Chepstow. If you actually go back and watch the ride, I can't remember who was on it that day, but at, at Chepstow last week, blimey, the jockey who ever was on that, he never gave up. That was definitely ride of the month and she needed every yard of the two miles. But when he does send his horse, his jump horses on the flat, they often do all right. And even though this horse didn't beat a single rival home at Lingfield, shaped like it needed the run, had a pretty much of a, of a wide trip, and it didn't help. But that the mark now is 55 for this horse, and the handicap has dropped dropped him five pounds. Now, if you actually go back through his form, he's actually you could argue you fairly well treated off a mark of 55. He actually won a handicap over in Ireland when he was trained by Jim Bolger off uh, 59, and his hurdle mark is a one two two. He was running in some okay hurdle races, even though yes they were some jump races, but still nonetheless he was showing a good bit of form. And this bunch of horses, we we all know what they're capable of. Um they hold no secrets from the handicapper, you know, they don't look like they could improve that much. Whereas this horse, you know, it might have a little bit to offer of a mark of fifty five in a weak race. Stepping up in trip won't help help will help its course as well. Um and I just think there's lots of like, you know, Nigel Hawke like I said, he's had a winner. He's had a couple of winners since uh, racing's resumed on the flat, and he does all right with some of his horses, you know, in this sphere of racing. And at fifty to one with four places on offer, if you want a bit of a fun bet, you know, I think small stakes each way. This has got a, as good a chance as anything as finishing in the first four, and I, I'd be tempted to take the fifty to one, you know. And if there is any money down, who knows what price this horse can go off at? It could go off sixteen to one? Who knows? Maybe, hopefully, some of you might back it and then force the price down. But, yeah, this level of intensity, you know, a 50 to 1, you know, I've, I've seen worse 50 to 1 shots, and and some of you might think I'm barking mad, but I, I fancy this horse to run an all right race tomorrow. So that's going to be my tip there. My nap of the day then comes in the final race at Kempton in the 8.55 with a horse called Anno Lucius. Three to one with bookmakers at the moment. Trained by Sir Mark Prescott and Luke Morris has booked for the ride. Uh, Mark Prescott's stable in good form, operating at twenty-four percent strike rate. They've been going well since the resumption of racing. And you might remember we put this horse up a couple of weeks ago when he finished second behind Camouflage, and he stayed on really strongly that day. I know Lucius. Um, to this, and he probably wants a little bit further. He's going to be running over the same trip, but he's going to be better off at the weights tomorrow. He's going to be four pounds better off with camouflage. He's off a mark of 61. He got raised two pounds for that second place effort, but I think he looks fairly treated in in the race off this mark still, and he could still be improving. He's related to uh, horses like Aurora Grey that were good stairs over two miles. He looks like the typical Smart Prescott horse from last season that's going to make up into a good handicapper. And once he gets his win, he, the only way is up for him. And at three to one, I think he represents good value, you know, and I could see him going really close. And I think he's the one that they've got to beat, and he could easily have ten pound in hand in a once we um get through June and then into July, you know, he could be rated £10 higher. So, yeah, Anno Lucius, he's going to do his mind nap tomorrow, and I think he'll take a massive step forward from his second-place effort at Kempton last time out. So we'll just do the quick recap of the tips tomorrow. In the 4.45 at Beverly, quote line direct at 11-2, win bet. That is my next best. We then go with my extra bet, which is in the 5.40 at Chepstow with a horse called Somewhere Secret. 15-2 each way, four places. The lay bet comes in the 6.25 at Kempton with a horse called Combine. You can lay up 3.0 uh, on the bet for exchange price. We then go my long shot in the 8.25 at Kempton with a horse called Level of Intensity. 50-1 to 1 for Nigel Hawk, four places each way. And then in the final um, selection, we go to my nap in the 8.55 at Kempton with a horse called Anno Lucius, 3-1, to one, and that will be a win-only bet. So they're my five bets for tomorrow's race in action. Hopefully we can have a bit of a better day, but if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe here to my YouTube channel to never miss a video. You can also follow me on social media, where the best place to do so is on 
Twitter, where my handle is at LuckyLoaders15. And if you want to find out more about myself and my career as a journalist in racing, go to my website, which is www.chrisloaderracing.co.uk. And remember as well, if you want to join that Telegram play page, click the link below and uh, it'll take you to the right places. But enough of me uh, waffling on now. Please gamble responsibly. Hopefully we can have some winners tomorrow and we'll be seeing you soon.